Hi folks, and welcome back to a beautiful day. <laughs> Another gorgeous day for allotmenting, good lord. My, my, my. I'm very glad that today I've brought a flask of tea and some lunch with me. So I'm gonna be taking it kind of easy, probably dodging a few of the storms. My main, sorry for shouting. I always start shouting when it's raining. My main, I've just walked in as well, so I'm a bit out of breath. I was like stomping, trying to get through the rain. But um, my main objective for today was actually a bit of an unusual one. My plan was to put these to good use. I've got some uni strut, very kindly given to me by an allotment neighbor. I love the sense of community down here. I did offer them some cash, but they've just got it spare. And my plan for these is basically to use them as raised bed supports, sort of in the middle of some of the longer beds, just to stop them kind of bowing out over time. You can just use timber, but it doesn't tend to last too long. I did use a, just a bit of timber that I knocked in down here for the polytunnel raised bed. But I thought for some of the scaffolding beds, you know, the newly bought ones, I wanted to do them a little bit of justice. So I'm just gonna tap this into the ground and then screw them in with some washers, just a couple of screws into the side. Probably gonna do that when it's dried off a little bit because I don't love the idea of using the drill in this rain. And I've got plenty of other stuff on the to-do list that I actually showed kind of at the start of this week off. Quite a lot of things that never got finished. You know, I had them down like um, the big tidy for Tuesday. Uh, I kind of got halfway through that. So there's lots of things that are kind of rolling on into the days and Thursday. I can't believe it's Thursday already. But the bed supports, I was having in mind that I might put up some pea structures as well. Although my peas haven't germinated yet, so there's no rush there. Something has germinated though that I've got to show you in the greenhouse. Um, and I wanted to do a bit more raised bed work as well. Today is like the raised bed day in the, in the calendar. And um, the L bed, I never really finished. And I want to rebuild the, the, the bed at the side of the greenhouse. But I might be waiting until the weather's eased off a little bit. So while we wait, why don't we pot up some potato tubs? I've had these chitting away merrily for probably like a month now. They've not done much. I've never really bothered with chitting, to be honest, and I was expecting a little bit more. I don't know, maybe it's still quite cold in here. So I'm gonna leave the, these are all main crop, so it's quite early for those, but I'm gonna just leave them in the tunnel. I've got some Desiree and actually Red Duke of York, which aren't a main crop, but if you leave them, they turn into like massive baking potatoes, apparently, if you leave them for as long as you would a main crop. So I'm gonna try that. I've got some at home as well, chitting, but we'll do, we'll do the first couple. Okay, so I have just grabbed a few things, but I don't have much of a plan for these potatoes, really. We're just gonna wing it, which is, you know, what we do here. Some kind of animal just made the weirdest noise outside. It's proper windy. I did wanna say a quick thank you for all of the lovely comments on the, the video about Steve. I just mentioned today is Thursday and the, you know, I'm well behind on the videos or sort of ahead of myself in the videos, but um, yeah, it only went out last night for me recording and there have been so many just lovely lovely comments so i just wanted to say thank you for that and i joked at the start about it being a glorious beautiful day on the plot but no matter the rain like despite it i'm still so happy to be here and part of that is definitely making the videos the feedback from you know the comments and the community i just love it so much but moving on to the potatoes you might notice as well actually i've just said potatoes but the garlic tubs are still in the polytunnel and it... what is that noise Absolutely no idea. It sounds like a mix between um, like scraping metal and maybe like a fox sneezing or something like that. It's very weird. I doubt it came across on the microphone. Maybe you just think I'm going mad. Anyway, yeah, the garlic tubs are still in here and it's basically just because it's still really wet outside. Like these would be fine. They're very cold hardy, obviously. They've, they've had the frosts in the tunnel as well. Hopefully it got down to minus three in here. So hopefully they've, they've done their splitting. And as soon as it starts to dry up a little bit, I'll get them outside. I'm just always worried about garlic rotting. So for the time being, it's still in here, but we've got loads of other tubs still free, a couple here, and a few of the ones over here which are full of spent compost, which I think is what I'm mostly gonna plant the potatoes into, to be honest. I've just got a lot of chicken pellets and some pelleted fertilizer as well. And I th I'm thinking maybe I just try growing, do a little bit of an experiment. We always like to do experiments with the spuds. Um, last year I tried growing them in soil from the garden and manure and all that kind of stuff and, and I wondered, does the benefit come from the fact that you're growing in expensive compost with added fertiliser and all that kind of stuff or is it just from 
the way that they grow in pots themselves, you know, the restrictions to the amount of soil, maybe the fact that the pots themselves warm up, maybe it's easier to control watering and that kind of thing. All of them were just a bit weird. All of the pots went weird, so I had no meaningful results. But, you know, a bit of a shame. I don't know if maybe I didn't water them enough or I got the care for the pots wrong. I think it was probably more user error than anything down to that. But I'm going to do a bit of an experiment, some with spent compost, 100% spent compost, because I've got bags and bags of it lying around. And I'm going to do some with 50% spent compost and 50% fresh. Oh, days like today are just so glad to have areas undercover to still, you know, be productive in. I love it. I've got my hood up inside. I think I had my hood up the entire time I was doing this. I'm really glad that this year I've kind of made a bit of a concerted effort to keep hold of all of my spent compost. Really handy having them all in kind of tubs and I've just been using bin bags and that kind of thing to, to keep hold of it. And it's come in really handy, you know, like that's four buckets I've just filled. And I could probably have done Maybe eight, you know, I've got a few more big bags kicking around at the back of the tunnel. And I'm really looking forward to reusing those in some of my chili pepper potting mixes as well. Um, the main benefit, of course, is that we know it's a fantastic texture. I've had really good root growth in it last year. So just amending it with lots of fertilizer, I think we'll have really good results. I have seen a lot of people, um, we talked about this a little bit on Potty Mouth, uh, our last show. People are having problems with um, the Silver Grow compost that I've obviously been recommending quite, um, I wouldn't say I've been doing the hard sell, but you know, we did the factory tour and all that kind of stuff. Nothing paid, so I don't have a guilty conscience. But I have seen a lot of people saying that basically they're getting decent germination, maybe up to the first true leaves, and then the plants are stalling a little bit. It's happened to Tony and Jesse this year, as well, which is why we're talking about it on potting now. And a lot of people are saying that the root growth is fantastic. You know, they've gone to pot on and the seedlings look really healthy. They're just not doing much up top. And what I would recommend if you're having a similar thing is just a bit of a liquid feed. The folks over at Silver Grow do say that you need to feed a little bit sooner with some of the peat-free mediums. I would expect that you were getting much more than just your first true leaves. Um, and I've certainly had pretty good results this year with my chili peppers. But I am starting to notice maybe a little bit of a similar thing in some of my modules, but the weather has really turned. So it could just be the weather. You know, we had a really nice little spell down on the south coast while it's been raining across the rest of England for them to germinate. And then they've kind of not done much, you know, some of my brassicas and that kind of thing. So maybe I'm having a similar thing, but I do love a, a liquid feed of, of seaweed extract. Um, I just use DOF. There's loads of companies that do it. Shropshire seaweed is meant to be really good. Um, so if you're having a similar thing, don't despair, like be reassured that you've got a, a fantastic medium for root growth. You're not going to have any weed pressure in those seed modules as well, which is one of the main reasons I love silver grow. You're not going to have any contamination. And because you've got that fantastic root growth, you can give them a little bit of a top up feed and the plant should readily absorb it and start kicking back into life. You can as well mix a bit of blood, fish and bone in with your silver grow when you're putting on your seedlings. I've not done it for my seedlings, but when they get a bit older for my chilies, I do do that. So if you're having those problems, give that a go. A little bit of supplementary feeding. Something else just worth adding on that subject as well is that I've, I know it's more likely to be the weather impacting my seedlings because everything I've sown in the polytunnel in the ground has done the same thing. They've all kind of sat there in their cotyledons just waiting, I think, for a bit more sun and a bit more warmth. Oh yeah, you can't be a cup of tea in the polytunnel. Really, really interested to see how these go. Four tubs, two King Edwards, two Red Duke of York, 
Some have got 50% spent compost, some have got 100% spent compost, and of course you would expect the ones with the, you know, only 50% of the spent compost to be a little bit better, but given that it's had loads of amendments, given that we know the texture of the spent compost is good, I don't know, I don't know what they're gonna do. I just hope we get a decent crop out of these ones, unlike the last ones, which all went a bit wrong. I have just knocked the first few, uh, those bits of supporting. <laughs> wow, the, uh, the uni strut has just gone in and it was really nice and easy, actually. I don't know if you can hear me over this rain. Let's get the mic a little bit closer. But um, yeah, I've just, this weather, it's apparently meant to brighten up. So to be honest, you know, I've just had a little bit of lunch, a little bit of lasagna from last night. <laughs> And I'm just kind of chilling today. I'm taking it really easy. It's been like, go, go, go this week off. And um, it's nice to just sit, isn't it? And avoid the rain a little bit. <laughs> I've got my tea. It's going to brighten up in about half an hour if the forecast is right. And uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm really feeling it today, you know? I was expecting that uni strat to be one of those jobs that, uh, I don't know, just go sideways, but it really did just tap in nice and easy. I just get, still need to screw them in. It's just... I don't really want to take the drill out while it's bucketing it down. It's fine in like, you know, just a little bit of light drizzle, but I'll get the screws in when it's time to get the screws in. I've just been reading a few more comments on that Steve video and oh, it's just really, really nice. The whole thing would have been a hundred times harder without the supportive comments. You know, I've not, unbelievably, for anything on the internet, I've not had a single negative comment about the poly tunnel, about the, you know, about reusing Steve's tunnel and I, that boggles my mind not one I mean not not one negative comment so um that just never happens you know hundreds and hundreds of lovely supportive comments it's just so nice and I do love I love days like these where you just take it a little bit easy and just enjoy being at the allotment you know it's been such a nice week off and it's just kind of rekindled my love of making these kind of videos i wake up every morning and i cannot wait to get down here get the camera out i try and get home by about six o'clock to start editing try and finish up by eight sometimes i have to do a bit more in the morning before i can get out and it's just i love that that cycle of oh, oh the rain's stopping it might start back up again but um i just love this cycle and it's so, so good. Is it easing up? It's starting up again. Okay, I'll finish this cup of tea and then we'll go and have a look. There is as well still that thing to show you in the greenhouse. Very exciting. Not only has the rain stopped for a second, the sun is trying to come out, which is just, ah, oh, it's so nice on a day like today. This is what they look like, just super simple. You might wonder why I've gone on the outside of the boards, not on the inside. And that's just because the inside is lined with plastic and I didn't want to scuff it all up. There's my, maybe a slight trip hazard, but I think it's going to be fine and I can still get the wheelbarrow through here, which is the main thing. But uh, it feels as though this will, for some reason, make it a little bit stronger as well. I don't know if that's true, but obviously the weight, the main reason that I'm doing this is for the weight of the soil. As this gets built up and up over the years, this will start to bow. And at the moment, they're not too bad, but I think the weight of wet soil is not something you want to underestimate. So with these in, I'm just using a little washer and then a pretty chunky screw. And it probably just needs one, but I'm doing two. Nice little rhyme. Super simple. And once it's in, it's just going to give it that little bit of added protection. It's not super deep into the ground, so, you know, if you crashed a car into it, it would still come up. <laughs> Hopefully no one's going to be driving a car into these raised beds. I don't know why I picked that as an example. It's just the first thing I thought of. Nice, very nice. All of these beds have now been secured in. I'm really pleased. That was so, honestly so much easier than I expected. You know, you just get this so much, so often with little jobs that go sideways and take so long. So it's a pleasant surprise when they don't. I mentioned the other day about how some of the no dig beds are just like stayed pretty much weed free. And this is a great example. There's a few tree seeds I can see. These have blown in quite recently, but there's not much come through that's perennial. A few dandelions. A little bit of sorrel there, but, but considering that this has just had a mulch with horse manure, this looks really, really good, I think. I've done similar with the other two, but they're fresh manure, so loads more seeds. And this one, 
has been topped up with loads of the arisings from the tunnel. So lots to do in terms of bed prep, but this is on the to-do list for this week to get all of that plastic off, to get it all raked over, smooth, nice, ready for sowing, ready for planting. This is the other probably most spectacular no-dig bed. This is where we had the parsnips. And look at that, barely a weed in sight, and you can still see a little bit of the mulch on top. Two tiny, tiny little weeds. Look like beetroot, actually. I wonder if there's something I've sown that have stayed there all winter. We'll see. And over here, one of the reasons that I've not put the supports in this massive bed is because I think this is probably going to be temporary. I made this massive just because it's a bit of a weird space and it's quite narrow and um, that way it's not very deep. But I think eventually I will probably turn this into three beds, which I didn't want to do at first and I think was just a mistake. One good thing is I now have a load more scaffolding boards so I can, one of the reasons I did this was because I didn't want to spend an extra, I don't know, 20 quid on, on it, more boards, which I think was a bit of a mistake in hindsight. It is so, so windy. And then this part of the plot really is what's next for me. This is the L bed. You can see the worst weed, weed uh, ingress. The couch grass has just gone absolutely wild and I've, I've really not been looking forward to this one, to be honest. This is the little mini bed next to the greenhouse. Planning on getting that weed matting off. This does have a bindweed problem, so hopefully it's not too bad. Some very old and tired bamboo canes. And this is the little bit that's broken down here. You can see the broken old raised bed there and the new bit of wood that I want to replace it with. I'll be honest, I don't really know what got into me. I don't know why I decided to refurbish this raised bed. It is hanging on by a thread. Um, I built this years ago, no lining. No, I didn't even treat it or paint it or anything. It was just some old, I don't know, timber scrap wood. Um, one of the first things I think I built on the plot actually. And uh, I don't know, I just thought for old time's sake, I just <laughs> put it back together again, trying to use some, that horrible old saw. I don't know if you saw that. I was trying to saw through some of this timber with just a blunt saw and um, I don't know, put a smile on my face. I feel like I've, I've lost a little bit of the time pressure. I'm starting to catch up a little bit so I can just mess around doing stuff like this if I want. My idea for this is maybe um, some tomatoes outdoors. I did wonder about maybe putting the, the, um, the hotbed frame on this and then turning it into a cold frame. I've always thought this would be a nice little bit for a cold frame, although it does get a bit of shade from the water butt now. It would get the morning sun, which might be quite nice. I don't know, I think the bindweed is gonna come back with a vengeance. I can see some of it down here. Yeah, I don't know, I had fun doing it, a bit silly, but um, I couldn't quite bear to start on the L bed. <sighs> this one is just so much. I think I might actually have to just kind of dig this over to get, there is so much grass back there that, you know, needs to come out and all this grass that's grown under the bed. So um, I think this needs some serious work. And instead of getting stuck into this, I just kind of return to the big tidy. I don't know why, I just, I wonder, if it, I don't know if I have a particularly messy plot. It could be that, it could be the building projects, or whether or not it's the fact that I have a YouTube channel and the fact that the plot is constantly on display. Does everyone, like, you, do the viewers, like, if you're watching this, do you get the same thing? <laughs> It's really difficult because I don't know, it could just be that actually you have a very tidy plot and you don't always have like hours and hours of tidying you could do. Or it could be the YouTube thing. Um, I don't know, let me know, let me know what you think, but let me show you what I've been doing. Ta-da! <laughs> I mean, it's not perfect, but I don't know if you remember how messy this was. There was so much kind of buried in here that it just got tossed in here and mixed up with all the, um, 
the wood chip down here, so it wasn't tidy at all. It's looking a lot tidier now, and I've got all my bricks lined up. I've done a big brick pickup from around the plot, and if they're not being used, they've been, um, they've been sorted out. And I think it's probably time to get started on this area for the water bar. I just need to probably do a bit of leveling so the water bar isn't sat on a big wonk, and we can get it plumbed in. Kind of finishing yesterday's job. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh no. Oh. That turned into a bit of an unexpected marathon, really. I, uh, I said earlier that I couldn't, I couldn't quite face the L bed just yet. And then, I don't know, I think it's just the sun coming out and the fact that it's dry really made me feel like, you know, I can't let this time go to waste while I've got it. And let's get stuck in. And what I've done, you might have been wondering, is that time lapse was going like, he's not digging it over properly, like he's only kind of doing a little bit. Plan is, I've just got out the worst clods of couch grass. Some of it was absolutely like dense. This stuff has been kind of growing away under the surface for years. And I think I've been pulling away at the tops and it's just really, really, really well established. So I've taken out a good kind of 80% of it. Um, a lot of this stuff I'm leaving, don't, don't worry, it doesn't grow from, um, you know, the blades, it grows from the roots. So I've been getting rid of the roots, they've all gone in, kind of the bad compost, you know. And, oh God, I'm out of breath. <laughs> and now the plan is to basically go no dig on here. I've got loads of cardboard in, and this bed, more than any other on the plot, is the one that needs it for now. Anyway, I haven't taken off a lot of the, the membranes. So hopefully this is the worst one and we'll get this covered over with cardboard a different day. It is so, so, so windy today. If I put any cardboard on here, it's all gonna go flying. So that's definitely a job for another day. I have as well had a bit of a tinker with the raised bed. I've put in a couple of little random kind of anchor points. It's not permanent, like it's just to hold the bed in place and stop it from being kicked around and going out of whack. And I've done a bit of leveling as well. It rises up in that corner, nothing I can do about it. It's just the, the earth under the poles. But, oh my goodness, it feels so good to just get stuck in. Oh my God. Oh, well, at least the greenhouses have been put to the test today. The wind, whoo, that new glass is holding. So I think I'm just about done. I think it must be around four, half four. Pretty good day, I got here around nine. Thank you ever so much for joining me. An extra special thank you to all of my Chili Pepper tier patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden, Sarah, and Andrew. I am gonna sleep well tonight. Ooh.